The very first step to ensure that the unwanted or unauthorized traffic doesn't get in or gets generated from our instances is to create our security groups. Now, what is a security group? It is an AWS Pharma solution which filters the incoming and the outgoing traffic from an instance. And this filtering is being done based upon the IP protocols, ports, and the source of the destination IP addresses. At the back end, it requires X.509 certificate and key to authorize changes. Let's now see that how the security groups are being configured and applied to the instances while we launch them. Now on this management console, I'll just click on EC2 that comes under compute section from where we can just launch our instances. And let's click on launch instance. I'll just quickly just go through the entire step and I just want to show that how we can configure the secure group. So let's choose the AMI and let's go through the instance type, click on next config instance details, click on next add storage, click on next add tags and now let's now click on next configure security group. Now on the step 6, this is where you have to configure and assign a security group to the instance that you will be launching. Now there are two ways through which you can just assign a group or a security group to an instance. Either you can just create a new one while launching it or you can select an existing security group from the list. So if you I just click on select an existing security group, I can just select any one of these as if now. Now let's click on create a new security group and let's name it as Linux SG, that stands for security group. And in the description, you can just briefly describe the purpose behind this security group. So let's type in this security group would be assigned to all web based instances. That's it. And now this is the main thing that we have to do is that we have to start configuring the rules. Now to reiterate, what is a security group? It is a set of firewall rules. It is a set of firewall rules that control the traffic for your instance. Now through the security group, you can just define that what kind of traffic can reach or leave your instance. So I repeat, you define that what kind of traffic can reach or leave your instance. Now on the left side, we start defining the protocols that we want to allow in. Because over here, the rules that we're going to be configuring would be the inbound rules. And after we launch this instance, I can just configure the outbound rules. Now, let us suppose that I choose SSL because this is a, a Linux based instance that I will be launching. Now, there are different protocols that we can choose, but uh, the very first protocol that I would be choosing would be SSH. Now, SSH stands for secure share. It's a default protocol for you to get access or get a secure access to the remote Linux machines. And the SSH always communicates over TCP port 22. It's a static, you can't change the ports. And depending upon that, which type of protocol you choose, the ports will change automatically. For example, if I choose HTTP, the HTTP, it uh, communicates over port 80. And if I choose, let's suppose, HTTPS, that's a secure version of HTTP, it always communicates or port 443. Depending upon what kind of protocols you want, what kind of uh, traffic you want to allow in, you define different kind of protocols and the associated parts. Now, let's suppose I choose SSH because I would be getting a root access to this Linux instance after I launch it. The most important thing that you have to choose is the source. As of now, the source is chosen anywhere. Anywhere means that this IP address range, 0.0.0.0.0.0 or I would say any IP across the internet can get access to 
this instance via SSH. So by default, if you just uh, go to the step six, it will allow the SSH traffic for your Linux instances from anywhere, from any source. Now this is quite dangerous because this will expose your instance or the root access to your instance from any IP, from any machine across the internet. And also you can see the warning message. Rules with the source 0.0.0.0.0 allow all IP addresses to access your instance. We recommend setting security group rules to allow access from known IP addresses only. This means that the root access, so if you're talking about the Linux based instances, the root access has been given through the SSH. The root access should be given to known IP addresses only. So I can choose either my IP. So as soon as I pick my IP, it will automatically pick the IP address of my machine upon which I am running or I'm just working upon this management console. So this is the IP address of my local machine upon which I'm recording this session. And I can choose a custom IP, for example, let, let me just copy it. I can choose a custom IP. I can define any other IP address range. So let's, let's name it as 202, something like that. Or else I can just make, make it as dot zero slash 24. This is a complete IP address range. So you can see that if I just pick it as dot zero slash 24, then a whole range of 256 IP addresses can get access to my instance. For example, 84.0, 84.1, up to 84.255. So a complete range, a block of 256 IP addresses would be authorized to get the root access towards my instance or the SSH access. Right now, if this was a Windows instance, then the root access can be given through the RDP. RDP stands for Remote Desktop Protocol. But since we're choosing or we are launching a Linux based instance, it would be SSH. Now, let's draw a scenario to understand the security groups in a much better way. Let us suppose that this is the Amazon Web Services Cloud. And this is the instance that you've launched within this cloud. And right to this cloud, this is a, a building, your office, where all your architects, your system administrators, or your IT guys would sit. So this is your nice looking corporate office, where all your architects, uh, Amazon Web Services guys, system administrators, developers, they will reside in and the machines will be placed in the same building. Now this custom IP address range, which is a complete block of 256 IP addresses, it's, um, be it belongs to all the machines residing in this building. So if I choose SSH from this custom source, so all these people sitting in this building would be able to get the root access or they would be able to generate the SSH traffic towards this instance. Now, apart from getting the root access, I have launched a Drupal web server or a Drupal website upon this instance. So I want that all the users across the internet should be able to browse the web pages that I have configured upon this instance. So these people should be able to send the web traffic. Now the web traffic is being defined by two types of protocols, HTTP and option it can be HTTPS. So both uh, constitute together to become my web traffic. Now this web traffic can come from any source that is 0.0.0.0 forward slash zero. These people would have the capability to just browse the web pages without making any root changes because the root access, the SSH access is given to only the known people, whereas the web traffic access or the web access is given to any person across the internet. So this creates a thin line between my administrators and the common end users. 
and this solves my purpose to make my instance as secure as possible. So let's do that. I just remove this drawing and I just start adding rule where I will allow the HTTP traffic from anywhere and the HTTPS traffic from anywhere. Right? So at the end you can see you can see two columns slash zero. I'm talking about this one. So this uh, represents the IPv6 addresses. Right? So this is how you can just configure the rules in your security group. Now, as I said before, this is the inbound rules that we're defining. So after we launch the instance, we can start tweaking in, in, into the outbound rules. Now, by default, any instance that we launch using a new security group will allow all the traffic outbound. Okay, so let's do that. Let's launch this instance real quick. I just click on review and launch, click on launch, choose a key file and just launch the instance. And once this instance has been launched, I click on this instance ID. And as you can see, this instance is in process of getting launched. Now I click on the security groups. If you just see over here, this is the Linux SG or the security group that we have created and assigned to this very instance. If I click on the view inbound rules, I can see all the inbound rules that we have configured. And if you just click on this security group, this will take us to the security group dashboard that you can browse by going to the left side in the navigation pane. And from here, I can manage all the security groups for my VPCs that reside in the region of Northern California. So this is quite important. The security groups that you create are specific to a region and especially they're specific to the virtual private cloud in which they are being created. So if you can see over here, this is the VPC ID for which these all these security groups are being configured. Now uh, I look for the security group, this Linux SG. And once I start checking out its inbound rules, this is the same one that we have configured. And in the outbound, by default, any security group that you create from scratch will allow all the traffic to all the protocols, to all the ports, to all the destinations. This means that it will allow the traffic to any destination. Now it's up to you. You can also perform some restriction that what kind of traffic can leave your instance. So you can just click on edit and you can say, that, okay, uh, I would be allowing the HTTP traffic to anywhere and only the HTTPS traffic to anywhere. So we are just allowing the HTTP and the HTTPS traffic to go outbound. The rest, all other traffic would be restricted. So just click on save. And this changes our outbound rules. So that's how you create, configure, and apply the security groups to the instances. It is very important and it's a full step to achieve the security of your instances.